Good afternoon YouTube and the internet. Today I'm going to show you how to access and change the coil packs and the spark plugs. This job, it's not that hard, don't no need to be scared of it. Um, even if you've got no mechanical knowledge, you only need a handful of tools. Um, step one, we're just going to get access to the cover. So we just want to pull off this inlet. Ends to me, yep. There's two bolts here. On there. On there. Yeah. If you're going to be doing any work in your car, I recommend investing in one of these. It's a magnetic uh, tray. Find some metal that will stick to it, and all your nuts and bolts will stick in it. So you won't lose them. That's it. Pop them off. And it's just spring loaded. That's all we need to do. Just pull that out of the way. A couple more hoses on the back. Pull that one out of the way. And then just lift this one up. Push it over the back. There's a little bracket that holds it. Whoops, let's see this dirt and dust and crap out of the way. So to get the valley cover off, we've got a series of uh, whatever size that is, Allen key. So these are all 5 mil uh, Allen key, Allen heads, whatever you want to call them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and one at the back is 8. One at the back is a bit of a pain in the ass. Always. No, that's still not going to work. I did have a proper bit for this, but someone's gone and lost it on me. So this is just a quarter inch drive, which I'll have to hold my finger against to get in there without dropping. I mean a quarter inch socket, not a quarter inch drive, it is also a quarter inch drive. So we can get access to this back one. The other option I had was these. This is too tall to get in there with the correct size on it, so I couldn't use them either. Let's pull this one out so that drop it down the back of the engine, lose it. Once you've got all that one done, unscrew it all cap. Now under here, it's going to be every bit of oil you've ever missed with. And now you just got to be careful around right this. I think this just pulls out actually. Yep. So that just pulls straight up. Good about that. And voila. So while you're here, just clean the excess oil, all the spillage that you've ever had down there. Wipe it off down the back here. Try not to move the seal too much. And these are your coil packs. One through six. And quite simply, just pull this up. Down in that hole, is spark plug number one. Now the Falcons are a bit shitty. I uh, can't remember what size, I think it's that one. As far as the um, depth, you have to go into the head to get them. So you need the longer bar and you'll need a proper spark plug socket with a rubber ring inside it. What that does is it grabs the spark plug itself so you can get it out. And they should not be very tight at all. You just undo that like so and using the proper uh, spark plug socket it'll stay in the socket. You pull it out to get it in 
Uh, now I've actually already, already replaced all these with uh, iridium spike plugs, so they're good for 100,000k, so I've got plenty of time left on these. I've just done this to show you guys, and then to put one in, this is exactly the same. If you've got the proper socket, it's much easier. Uh, most of the cheap socket sets come with one. Just make sure you don't cross thread it when you start. Wind it down by hand. Uh, if you're using copper plugs, you need to ensure that they gap correctly. If you're using the correct iridium plugs, they, you, can't, you, to, you can't change it. So you have to buy the correct gap when you buy them. These have a set torque number. I don't know what it is. Not too tight. Now, I could stop there because that's showing you how to get them. And the first five are all exactly the same. Just push it down. Make sure that engages. Number six is a bit of a bitch. If you think with all the room that they had in this engine bay, there wouldn't be anything in the way. But there is. If you can get this coil out. If you can get this coil back out. unplug that one. Okay, so this is the coil pack. We'll pop it in there. Now what you'll notice here is you can't get this down the hole. So you can pop that and you can't even pop that in. So what you have to do is get a universal like this. So with your um, universal joint, you can get it in on the angle, drop it down the hole, then you can get your ratchet on. Okay, and then oops, making sure it's on, you can undo it. You've got to be careful of these lines here because as you undo it, it's, it's coming up. So once you get it loose, get the ratchet out of the way. Do the rest by hand. If you try and use a shorter extension, you can't reach it. Once again, using the correct socket. If you don't have that, it's going to be more difficult. You'll need to get a, a one of these. Yeah, can't find it. You'll need a telescopic magnet or something to get down there and fetch it. So, it doesn't hurt to inspect your plug, so I don't mind pulling them out for this. Looks fine. Pop that back in there. Give it in on the angle again. Make sure we don't cross thread it. Nice and gentle. Getting it started. Wind it in as far as we can by hand. For this one, you'll need to go a little bit further so you can get the ratchet above under these lines. Let's finish it off. Like so. Pull it out. And it's job done. Always put your tool back. Tools back as soon as you're finished with them. That way you don't lose them. Uh, oh, we have to pop this core back down in its hole. Make sure we get it seated on the spark plug. Yep. That's fine. Get this core plug back on. Which way does that go? That way. So, just to ensure that we have done that correctly, 
Uh, before closing it all up, you just start the car and make sure it's running on all six cylinders. So as you can hear from that nice smooth idle, it's running on all six, so we can put everything back. And it's just the reverse. We're pulling it off. If you want to get a bit more excited about the cleaning while it's off, by all means, do so. It's the best time. Get this over here and through. This is a bit of a shit. This is on a seal, so you have to make sure it is sitting correctly. I recommend you do the back one, probably second, because you want to do one before it to hold the cover in place. You can press the seal a little bit. I did this one here. And then get this one in before it becomes too difficult to try and align. So now we have a couple of screws holding that down and in place. We can pop this PCV back in place. Just push this in. We can put our oil cap back on so we don't drop anything down the hole. And then we just finish putting the screws in. These don't get up too tight at all. So I'm holding a piece of plastic down and holding the pressure on the seal, so I don't want to over tighten them. And they're also going into an aluminium head, which is easier to strip the threads. So just like the spark plugs themselves, don't, uh, don't do these up too tight. If you want to know what the actual torque numbers are for the uh, spark plugs, and even for these, they'll be in the factory service manual. You should be able to find a copy of it. I managed to find a copy of it. it. Took me about 15 minutes to find all 800 pages and download it. Um, when I needed to look up the oil capacity for the transmission for that video, pop it home, back up where it goes, like so. Pop this hose back up here. Things don't want to face that way, so we'll put it that way. This literally pushes on. It's not, there's no nothing to do up or undo on this. You just get it up there, get it located. The hardest bit is getting the underneath, put the other side in. But at the same time, that hose on. with it, don't try and force it, work the angles, it'll go when it wants to, feel around the bottom, make sure it hasn't folded up, I'm pretty sure it's good, but I have the technology to be 100% sure here. Seated all the way around. Two bolts back in here. Again, not too tight. You just hold in the plastic to a piece of cast. And that's it. Job done. It's not a very difficult job again. Only a couple of minor hand tools needed to uh, do your spark plugs. I recommend getting the Iridium ones only for the basis that you, you just don't have to do it again. If 
if you're a car guy who's you're going to be tinkering all the time anyway, go copper and change them every 20,000 k's or whatever, whatever the recommended number is. Um, there's nothing wrong with the copper plugs. I run them in the race car, uh, but lots of stuff gets changed all the time, like the whole engine at the moment. But um, in my daily driver, I've just went, ah, these are good for 100,000 k's, slam them in, forget about them, don't have to worry about them ever again. So that's why I've gone with Iridium. Uh, there's a few more jobs, a few more jobs I have to do on this. I've got a road trip coming up in October. I'm heading to Bathurst uh, to watch the race, Bathurst. So I'm going to be driving the old girl down there. So that's why I've done sort of some of the major service items like the transmission, uh, the coolant flush, etc. There's a few more bits and bobs I need to take care of before it's ready to take on that trip. That's two days down, two days back. Um, and yeah, I expect it'll work flawlessly up and back. Uh, but yeah, if I need to do any other little bits and bobs between now and October, I'll record them when I think of them. And uh, well, there definitely, are, there definitely are some extra bits I have to do, but I can't do them today. So, when I do them, I'll share with you what I've done and slam them up on YouTube. But for now, it's good night.